All right, so we have our particles emitted. Uh, maybe let's increase uh, the speed a bit. So we're setting the speed here, but uh, to make it simple, let me just use uh, combine X and I just use negative 0 0.01, connect it here so that if I want to increase the speed, I can just use a vector math, a vector math here, set it to scale and let's say maybe double the speed. Oh, this should be 0.1 not point. Okay, that's too fast. Let's do 10. Now you might notice that when we increase the speed, we get some breakup patterns like this. And uh, now our collider doesn't seem to, to work anymore. And the reason for that is that uh, when these particles hit, because the speed is really fast, they seem to go out sometimes. Let's bring back our collider here, join it back in after the collision or after the simulation so that we can take a look at. Yeah, you can see that some are going through it. And to make the collider easier to see, I'm just going to convert it to, uh, to curve, mesh to curve, so that we see the wireframe of it. Yeah, so some are colliding with it, some are not. And uh, one of the reasons why that could be happening is because when they have a, a color of white, it means that they have collided with the mesh. When they turn back to black, uh, then this here, this set position no longer works on them, so they can go through the mesh. Uh, what I'm going to do is instead just store an attribute called heat or collision. Let's use a store named attribute. Uh, it's going to be a boolean, a boolean. And uh, what it's going to do is store the heat value. So whenever the particle hits uh, the collider, we're going to keep track of that. So this is going to be a boolean value and it's going to be called heat. Now the value is going to be uh, this. And uh, let me first remove everything here. So you can see that, uh, let's see, uh, we don't have to set this value yet. Uh, if I take a look at the named attribute heat, take a look at that. You can see that uh, it's, this is registering when these points hit uh, the object and it's not missing any. But uh, when these pass through, the heat value changes back to black. But uh, we want it to be consistent. So all you have to do is just use the math node and uh, add the heat attribute to this heat value before you connect this, before you store the value. So what it's going to do is this store named attribute on the first frame creates the heat attribute with a value of zero. So no particles are hit and uh, it's going to store that value until some particles are hit. Uh, so when those particles are hit or collide, that value is going to be set to one. It's never going to go back to zero after they hit because they start out with a value of zero. When they hit, uh, whatever this value is, is added to the hit value. So this value is always going to go to count up, giving us a, a white value instead of a black, instead of a black value. So all the particles after they hit, they're going to stay white, uh, some of, some here um, missed here because they didn't collide, uh, which is also a nice demonstration. Now this heat value can be used as uh, the set position and uh, this position now can be used as the positions. Now if we take a look at this, let me remove these knots here. Now you can see that uh, this is colliding and I'm just going to let me grab uh, the collider and move it directly in the way. And take a look at this. Perfect. So that's great. Let's remove this stepping effect we are seeing here. And I maybe even bring back our hand. So I'm going to use, I'm just going to join this here so that we can see uh, the hand emitting uh, the particles just like that. You can see how, uh, because these particles are moving really fast, uh, they're creating stepping here. We have, we don't have enough steps here. So what I'm going to do is randomize uh, this value here. Well, let me just do this. We can multiply this vector by some random value. So I can add a scale value here and use our random attribute just randomize that and uh, that should break up that. Uh, let's do 0.5. Uh, let's do one and uh, 0.9 maybe. Uh, maybe 
five. Yeah, so that breaks up that really easily. And take a look at that. We have some waves. We can increase uh, the turbulence a bit. And uh, yeah, we have some nice particles. Let's take a look at this in the render. Uh, so I'm going to just set up some materials. Let's make the world duck. And uh, here we're going to do a set material for the particles. Uh, let me call this part two. Uh, so this is set material. And uh, that material is going to be, let's call it lights and uh, bring it in here. Take a look at that. So we can go to the shader editor and use, to set up these lights, you can see that in some areas where the particles overlap each other, where the particles, or where the particles are many, uh, we get a lot of light. So let's emulate that by using an emission shader and uh, a transparency shader. Uh, this is very, very simple. And because of the transparency, when the particles are spread apart, uh, they're going to be less light. And when the particles are tied together, like say, or are clamped to together, like say here, we get really, really, uh, we, we get a lot of light. So I'm just going to mix these together. Take a look at that. And uh, we need the transparency to be very high high, maybe 0.4, and you can already see that in areas where we have a lot of particles, uh, we have a lot of emission, and uh, let's change the color, maybe something like that, let's do, yeah, so you can see what we have. In fact, we might even want to do a quick render here, so I'm using EV, uh, we can even add ray tracing if you want, and uh, the great thing about this, what we have done here is, since we used a collection, I can even bring in a ground. Uh, let me go to my asset library. I think I have some scanned ground, something like this. Bring it down. But, uh, if I look at the mesh, this mesh here, uh, it's too subdivided. It has a lot of polygons. So if you import that into geometry nodes, you're going to slow down. Uh, it's going to be heavy for the simulation and we want a really optimized simulation. So instead of using this directly, as my collider. I can just have it there and just create a mesh like this. Uh, let me subdivide it a few times, just like that, and use the shrink wrap modifier and use the object as the wrap and use a projection uh, so that this is projected onto the ground. I can even add some offset so that this is not directly onto the ground. I'll sh shade smooth. Uh, just like that. And now this, since this covers the ground, but uh, you can see that it doesn't use a lot of subdivisions. I can use this as my collider. And in fact, I can just dump it into uh, the collider and it will be used as my collider. Uh, let me hide this for a second. And uh, now if the particles hit this, they'll also, yeah, they'll also take on the position. Yeah, so now the particles that are colliding with the ground are also taking on the position of uh, the ground. You can switch out any colliders you want. Uh, if you don't want these particles to go, for example, you don't want them to go under the shield, uh, what you can do is just mask out this area, maybe using some a uh, boolean. Uh, so this is uh, where this is our original collider. Let's go to our original collider. I can just, you can maybe even just select this Let's go to the collider here. I don't want any particles to collide with this. So let me just set up a vertex group, call it remove, assign. And now uh, I can hide this. Now in the in the simulation, so this is our collider. And in fact, we can even take a look at that. Uh, since we have created a vertex group, I can just use the delete and use uh, the uh, the vertex group we have created, which was uh, remove, uh, to delete that part, those parts, and uh, now we can use this as the new collider. And you can see that uh, the particles will now take a different route. Uh, let me change this to faces. And uh, yeah, our shield also has to be cut off uh, so that it doesn't intersect uh, because it makes particles go under instead of around so you can also do that and uh, just go to the collider and uh, make sure that the shield doesn't go all the way down 
Perfect. Uh, we can turn on uh, ray tracing, but you can see uh, the particles are not adding any light uh, to the scene. If you're using cycles, uh, they would be able to do that. So the trick I did was I added a, a light, an area light facing the direction of the particles. Uh, you can use a point light, but the point light will also bleed some light in the back. I just wanted the light to follow the direction of the particles. So instead, let's use a point light like that. And uh, we already have uh, the particles. Uh, let's add some space here. But uh, you don't want each particle to have a light. In fact, if you do that, Blender will likely crash because uh, lights can significantly slow down Blender. So what I'm going to do is use a delayed geometry, delayed point, and delayed by probability. So using the random value, I set this to Boolean, which will give us the probability. And we want to delete nearly 99%. So we remain with, let's see, 264 points in this case, but that's all also too much. So I'm also going to further delete by randomly from that 200 and whatever. And uh, you can do that by simply using the Boolean math. So if you change this to O, it basically means that uh, whatever this deletes, delete more again using this random value. And uh, what you have to do is make sure that the seed is different so that this gives you a different random value. So if I change this to one, you can see that we have gone from 264 to nine points. So that's enough lights. Or if you want less, you can reduce this value and uh, you get about 60. But uh, let's do uh, let's do maybe 10 points. Uh, so nine is okay. So now I can instance those lights onto these points using the instance on points. And I can bring in that light. And it has to be an instance. So make sure you mark as instance and pick instance. So if you take a look at this, we should get the lights. They're all facing down. So I'm going to use relative so that they are facing uh, the object. But uh, you need to, if you do that, you need to make sure that you clear the position of the light. And uh, you, to make sure that this doesn't render, I'm going to just use another collection called lights. I just disable that so that we don't see it. Uh, I can reduce the scale if I want. And uh, now we have lights. Now we can join this to uh, the rest of the geometry. So we get something like that, I think. Let's see. Yeah, when they are very low like this, uh, you get some harsh light. So maybe you could change uh, this to a point. Yeah, that could also be good. Let's go back to this. Now we can increase. Let's maybe add a little bit more. So right now we have 24 lights. Remember, the more particles you have, the more lights you're going to have in the scene as well. So you can see now we have some decent lights. Let me just add a little bit more. And uh, all you have to do is change the color of the light to match uh, to match your particle lights or particle colors and we get something that looks interesting i can increase uh the the intensity of the light so that's how you get the particles let me do a quick render before we go to the next the next part of uh, this and uh, i can turn on motion blur uh, usually, if you set it to end frame, you get more, you get better motion blur with EV. Now let's reduce the motion blur a bit, and uh, I think I'm going to render about 100 frames and come back, take a take a look at that. It's going to add a bake there, and uh, it's going to be set to animation. Now before I bake, let me change this, increase the particle count to 1,000, and bake. 